might want to put the coffee down for this one. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you guys are having a great day so far. My name is Gianluca and I'm a first year Canadian medical student. And today what we're doing on the channel is that I am responding to a challenge that was put out to me by my good friend Priv. I'm going to link her channel in the description below. But basically what's been happening is that there is a challenge going around between a few of us Canadian medical student YouTubers so far. Started by Jimmy from MD Prospect where he saw that there was a Chinese neurosurgeon who live on television was able to transplant an egg membrane from one egg onto another. He was a neurosurgeon, but then he held the egg upside down and nothing was able to leak out. So then Jimmy from MD Prospect turned it into a challenge. He did a really good job with it and I think he and MD did a really good job with it as well. Priv did a great job with it. And I guess now it's my turn. And guys, please just keep this in mind before we get started. I'm just a first year medical student. I am not a neurosurgeon. Um, but one thing that I don't do, especially here on the channel, is back down from a challenge. So we're gonna get started. This is gonna be first year medical student versus neurosurgeon. Let's do it. So before we move on to the grand event that is the actual egg transplant, what I'm gonna do first is show you guys what I've been using to practice suturing. I'm in the first year of medical school. We haven't had any time to specifically work on our suturing techniques, so everything that I've learned up until now is self-taught. This is the kit that I've been using to practice whenever I get some free time. There's a few really cool things here. First, we have our needle drivers, uh, complete with the actual suture inside. I don't know if you guys can make that out, but these are gonna be really important for actually diving the suture in and making your bites the closing the wound. Then we have our forceps right here. These forceps, if you see at the tip, actually have little, almost additional like teeth to pull back on skin uh, and, and help for skin suturing. And then we have our, these are our closed and uh, sterile sutures in here. Uh, a lot of times when you're in medical school, you could actually get these from the hospital that your school is associated with because these have an expiry date and whenever they expire and there's extra ones left over, they'll give them out to the medical students to help them practice. Then we have our scissors to actually um, trim the excess on the sutures. Uh, and finally, we have our scalpel right here, which don't even need to tell you guys, but this is super sharp, um, surgical, if you will. And you just kind of cut back uh, on your analog here, your, your wound analog, you make whatever type of incisions um, you want to, and then you close them, you practice, you could do horizontal or diagonal incisions. Uh, and it really has uh, an interesting feel to it when you first start practicing your suturing. So I'm actually gonna link a really cool video in the description below by Dr. Buck Parker. He's a general surgeon down in the States that actually does a really good job explaining how to do a basic, uh, a simple interrupted suture, um, which is what everyone starts off practicing. But what I'm gonna do first before we move on to the egg is quickly just do one more practice, make sure that I haven't forgotten because it's been a while, uh, truth be told, since I actually practiced suturing, and then we're gonna move on. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with my forceps in one hand and my needle driver in the other hand. I'm gonna be palm the needle driver and again I'm gonna link a great video in the description below but basically you pop in on one side you give it your first bite and the first bite is gonna go through to whatever your desired depth is you come out expose the actual suture needle then you're gonna go in pull it out a little bit pull through for your first bite then you take your forceps and do the same thing on the other side. You're gonna go in for your second bite now. And you're gonna try and make it equal the same distance through as your first bite. And you pull it all the way through. You take your forceps and now you pull the suture string horizontally so you're not poking anyone beside you if you were doing this on an operation table. Uh, then you could set your forceps down or you could palm them. You take one loop two loops and now we're going to be securing our actual suture knot so that's one we tie it nice and tight not too tight uh, and then we're going to give it a second one one two grab pull through now we're going to do another maybe two just to lock it in there's our first one and then let's we'll give it one more, lock it in for the second one. And that's gonna be how a first year medical student does uh, suture practice. Now, I know it looks really easy when you're using the big, sturdy practice mannequin here, but I feel like now with these very delicate egg membranes, that it's gonna get a lot more complicated. So what I have here, this is my setup. 
I have two different eggs because in every transplant operation you need the donor and you also need the recipient. So first I'm going to start off by actually prepping the recipient to receive the membrane. Okay guys, just that first part was so hard. I just had to be so delicate trying to take off the eggshell pieces without piercing the membrane. For those of you that have no idea what the membrane on the egg looks like just like that, um, there it is. You kind of see if I touch it very lightly, kind of feels, kind of feels like bubble wrap a little bit. So I've prepped the first egg for the transplant. I've also taken the membrane off of the second egg. Now the plan is to go in with four bites, one on each side, and hopefully that way we can secure it so that when I tip the egg over, I don't make a mess all over the desk. Okay guys, I'm not going to lie to you, that was probably one of the most difficult things I've ever done in my entire life. <laughs> what I was going through this turned more into a personal challenge for myself and less about a YouTube video. I totally forgot that I was filming a video for a second. I just kept going over and over again because I knew that I, I had to get this done. I told myself that I was going to do it and I think there's a life lesson somewhere in here but um, all that matters is that on the third try I was actually able to get three sutures in. I know the original plan was for four. But it looks fairly, fairly, fairly sturdy right now. Uh, I don't know if you can see here. There's one at the top, one on the right side, one on the on the left side. Guys. <laughs> And it stays, oh my, I don't believe this. I don't know if you guys could pick it up from the beginning of the video, but I started when it was still light outside. I think it was like 7.30ish, 8 o'clock, and now it's totally pitch black. This took me way longer than I thought. So thank you, Prim, for the challenge. Um, I thought it was it was awesome. It was, it was definitely difficult, but I worked on a lot of my skills. But I'll tell you guys, this works up a little bit of an appetite. So in summary, I have two patients cracked, one scrambled. I learned that I'm not as good as a neurosurgeon when it comes to this stuff by any means, but I did work on a lot of my suturing skills, and although it took me a long time, um, I really found this was helpful. It really helped me to transition from the practice model to something a little bit more delicate. So for that, this was a great challenge. Thanks so much to Jimmy from MD Prospect for starting this challenge. Thanks again to Priv for tagging me in and getting me involved. Guys, I found that the best part about being on YouTube so far, for me personally, was just interacting with all these different people that I hadn't known before. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and keep the ball rolling. I'd like to call out my buddy Darius from Darius Med. Go ahead and give this challenge a try for yourself. I feel like you're gonna be great at it. Also, shout out to Thiago from the University of Ottawa. And finally, let's throw the stone a little bit further this time and really try and get a Karma Medic. Buddy, you gotta give this a try. I know you're busy with all your study with me videos, but I think you'd have a lot of fun with it. And I'd love to see what you could do with this challenge yourself. Now guys, other than that, it was fun practicing my suturing skills, but I really need to get back to actually learning neurology right now and all the neuroscience that comes with it. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be doing for the rest of the week. I hope you guys liked the video. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. Remember to keep working hard, keep studying hard, keep having fun, eat your eggs, stay healthy. <laughs> we'll see you guys later, everyone take it easy.